DC Nation, what is up? Back to the video, and today I'll be covering all the new DC Comics for the week of November 2nd. Now, to start it out, we got Dark Knights of Steel, number one. This is an Elseworlds storyline written by Tom Sailor, art by Yasmin Putri, and guys, this comic is really cool. The issue opens up, we see Jor-El and Lara and baby uh, Kal-El that crash into Earth, so already a big change. Kal-El, or Superman's real parents, don't die on Krypton. They make it to Earth well, like they're alive. And it actually shows like Jor-El, he kills some humans because they're about to like shoot Lara with arrows. It's a very tense opening scene. But then we fast forward a little bit. We see that the House of El is a kingdom. And Jorel and Lara, they lead this kingdom. And we got Kalel as the prince. And guess who's the knight? The Dark Knight himself, Batman. And a big twist in this issue is that Batman and Superman are actually brothers. So there is another kingdom, not the House of El, but like a Wayne kingdom, you could say. And we had Martha and Thomas, the father and mother of Batman. And we got Jor-El, he had fair with Martha. Then they had Bruce, but Lara doesn't know about this. So you got that family drama going on. And Batman, Superman, their brothers. Batman finds out at the end of the issue and guess who gets shot? Well, another one of Batman's parents gets shot. This time, though, it's Jor-El. Because we see in the middle of the issue that Green Arrow, he's being instructed by this other character, who I think is Green Lantern. Green Arrow shoots an arrow and hits Jor-El straight in the eye at the end of the issue. It's a very shocking cliffhanger. I really like it. It actually gets me really hyped for the next issue. But that's not the, all the stuff that happens in the issue. That's, like, the big stuff. But we also see Batman and his Robins go after this character named Banshee. And Banshee is then revealed to be the medieval version of Black Canary. We get a whole sequence where Batman, he's trying to fight back, his ears are literally bleeding, and then Superman comes in to help and they take down Black Canary. Because the reason Batman's been sent after her is because the one thing that the House of El is afraid of and that could hurt the prince, Kal-El, is magic. And Banshee, Black Canary, she has magic in this universe. Or supposed magic. And yeah, that's basically all the events that happened into this issue. I really enjoyed it. It was a great Elseworlds storyline. I think Tom Sailor is at his best with these. Like, come on. Injustice, DCs, those are his big iconic stories, and those are Elseworld. And I think Dark Knights of Steel is his next big iconic story, like starting out to be. So yeah guys, if you like the idea of a DC universe going into medieval times, then definitely check out this issue. I highly recommend it. Next up, we got Batman number 116. This is the penultimate chapter of Fear States. And you guys already know, I have not been really enjoying this event. Last issue was especially weak because the artwork was not up to par. But guess what? This issue is better, not because of the story, but because Jorge Menes is back. He does the artwork for the entire issue, and it is phenomenal. Jorge Menes is one of the best artists at DC Comics right now. Like, he makes splash images that look like full-on posters. There is a Batman vs. Peacekeeper 01 rematch in this issue, which that part is actually really dope. The action's cool, the dialogue back and forth, that's cool, and the artwork, it, it's, it's just made me say wow, like it looked that good. I stopped reading it and I was just looking at the art. I was like, man, that looks good. Like, Batman, he has like a splash image where he's just standing there and it looks awesome. Same as Peacekeeper 01. Like, he looks cool. He goes all out. Like, he tries to kill Batman and plays his role as the new savior of Gotham City. But let's talk about what came before, though, right? You're probably like, Peacekeeper 01, Batman have a rematch? 
I thought Sean Mahoney, PC Bro 1, was under Scarecrow's control and he was in like this mind machine. Yeah, basically what happens in this issue, we see Batman, Miracle Molly, go out to the mind machine, run into the Scarecrow, Scarecrow starts having Miracle Molly go crazy, she sees fear, and then Batman follows Scarecrow's instructions, he follows him to the hideouts, which this is what I don't like. Scarecrow is written badly in this issue. He takes Batman to his hideout where the mind machine is. Batman obviously tries to stop it. Like, why wouldn't he? And Scarecrow's reaction is, no. Dude, why does that have to happen when I'm this close? Maybe finish your plan, finish what you're doing, and then get Batman involved. Like, you took Batman to the place he was searching out. Like, you made Batman's job easy. So... I didn't like that. But Scarecrow takes Batman there. Batman tries to stop the plan. And then Scarecrow says a couple lines that I ain't care for. Like, he's like, oh, I like this whole rivalry we have. Batman, Scarecrow. Like, I ain't care for it. But that's when Sean gets up, shoots Scarecrow. And that's when I actually got excited. Is James Titan actually doing this? Like, this is bold. Is he killing off Scarecrow for a little bit? No. Literally a couple pages later, Miracle Molly, she's trying to stop the mind machine, and the only way is to have the person who created it, like, override it, or, like, stop it with, like, a code. And Molly's like, well, Scarecrow's dead. But she looks over her shoulder, and nah, he's not dead. He's bleeding, yeah, like, he's almost dead, but he's gonna survive. Like, that whole shocking page of him getting shot, falling to the ground, it was just shock factor like that's all it was and I wish it was more there's potential there a lot of potential that's the thing about this entire event there's a lot of potential good themes good action but James Tynan just drops the ball at the wrong moments so yeah the writing is weak but other than the Batman and Miracle Molly part of the issue, we also have the Magistrate trying to destroy Queen Ivy. Queen Ivy fights back, and she's against Gotham City. She's gonna tear it to the ground. And then at the end of the issue, we see Harley show up with the other Ivy, and she's trying to convince Queen Ivy to stop what she's doing. Harley is trying to save the day. Or at least stop the match strength Queen Ivy while Batman stops Scarecrow and Peacekeeper 01. So yeah, there's two main plots kind of going on, and it's not bad. Like, it's not a bad issue. The artwork is great, there's some cool action, and some of the dialogue is good, but the potential, it doesn't get up to that. Like, James Tynion, he struggles in that. Like, he has a cool idea, like the story could be great, but I don't know why, his writing is not connecting, I'm not really liking it, and certain moments just take me out of the story, especially how Scarecrow is being written. So yeah guys, if you've been following this entire event, I recommend this, like why stop now, you're at the penultimate chapter, but if you've been not, then just don't read Batman for a little bit. Come back when Joshua Williamson starts out his run in like a month or two. Like, I'm pretty sure that run is going to be awesome. Next up, we got Batman Reptilian number five. This is the penultimate issue of this series, this mini series, written by Garth Ennis, art by Liam Sharp. In this issue, we see the monster of this story finally unleashed. It's pretty awesome, guys. Like, Liam Sharp's artwork is phenomenal. Like, he goes all out. It looks really cool. There's a couple images that just strike. Like, the monster is scary. Like, you see some citizens react to this. They're like, what is that? And that'd be my same reaction, too. But we also get in this issue, it's a great dynamic of Batman and Killer Croc. I really like the dialogue that Killer Croc gets. And Batman, he's an absolute unit. Like, he's really cool. He makes good decisions. And the end of the issue, where he jumps into the monster, like, literally through the mouth of the monster. It's a shocking cliffhanger, but I'm really intrigued to see what's going to happen. And yeah, obviously, Batman's not dead. It's not like, oh, he just jumped into the mouth, and the monster ate him. 
No, that's not what, well, yeah, the monster did eat him, but not, like, kill him. Because Alfred, like, screams, like, Bruce, no! And Killer Croc is like, wow, Batman was actually right. Like, because Batman earlier says, like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna die. I have to die to make this happen. And Killer Croc's like, what are you talking about? And Batman just jumps into the monster. Like, it's a very epic moment, and it hits. Now, there's not as much that happens into this issue. Like, it's a very fast paced issue. You see Killer Croc, Batman going back and forth, trying to figure out what to do. More Batman doing that. The monster being unleashed on Gotham, and then Batman making a final plan to stop it. So, yeah, I like this issue. I'm excited for the final issue coming out next month. I'm really looking forward to see how Garth Ennis is going to wrap this up. So, yeah. If you've been enjoying this series, I highly recommend this issue. Next up, we got Batman The Adventures Continued Season 2, Number 6. And this continues the Mayor Mayfield storyline where, okay, there's this mayor. He was scheming a little bit. Batman took him down his early years. But now, this guy, Mayfield, he's back and he's running for mayor again. And you think, oh, it's fine, like, Gotham won't trust him. But Gotham is actually backing him. And Batman, this issue, he kind of starts to back him, too, as Bruce Wayne. Like, you see Bruce almost endorse Mayfield. And Alfred's like, why is he convincing you? Is he that good at convincing people to do things? But then, we get to the twist at the end of the issue, and we see that Mayfield is working with the Mad Hatter. And it makes so much sense. Like, Mayfield has been tricking people, manipulating them, and you're like, how is he doing this? But now that you know that Mad Hatter is by his side, and Mad Hatter, that's his thing. Like, Mad Hatter tricks people, he manipulates them. That's what he does. So I like that twist. We also see Barbara, she investigates in this issue, and she gets caught at the end. Like, she gets hit in the head, and now she's in captivity, so that'll be interesting next issue. But my favorite part of the issue is Batman and Clayface. Clayface shows up for like two parts of the issue. We get an action sequence of him versus Batman, and then a scene in Arkham Asylum where Clayface is. And I just like Clayface's dialogue. I, this is my favorite interpretation of Clayface, the one from the animated series. How he acts, like he's a fun character. And seeing him interact with Batman, it just elevates the issue for me. Like the whole Mayor Mayfield storyline, it's alright. Having Mad Hatter come in now, it makes him more interesting. But I think Clayface should stick around as well. He just made this issue boost up for me. Like it made the issue a lot better. So I like Clayface and Batman's interactions. They're written very well. So yeah, guys, if you like the last issue, I recommend this one. But if you're a big fan of Clayface, then I highly recommend this issue. Because he gets a lot of good moments in this comic. Next up, we got Arkham City, The Order of the World, number two. And guys, this comic is awesome. Like, I really enjoyed issue number one, and this issue, it's better. Like, the best thing about the series is the whole dynamic of Dr. Jocasta Joy and the Ten-Eyed Man. The Ten-Eyed Man is so interesting. I really like his character, his dialogue, and how he gives... Jocasta, a map of pretty much Gotham City and where she can find her other clients. Because Dr. Jocasta Joy, her whole plan is to find her other clients and get them back to her so she can treat them again. They're all just out and about in Gotham doing their thing, and some of them are kind of high and low, like they're actually doing pretty good, but others not so much. And we got new threats in this series. And that is Asriel. Asriel, he shows up in this issue, and he's going after all these different inmates, all the clients of Dr. Tripasta Joy. And you see him go after this one character, Double X, and we actually get an opening sequence in this issue where, like, this crackhead, this guy who's looking for some drugs, he comes into this house, and he touches Double X, and he gets, like, the biggest high of his life. But... We see Asriel, he shows up, he takes Double X down, and we also see Detective Stone, he dies. 
And it's a small moment, but it actually hits. Like, I know some people will be like, oh, they kind of glossed over that. Like, he died and that was it. Dr. Jocasta Joy says in her narration that she was the last one to talk to him on the phone. So, she'll have to pretty much reveal his death to the GCPD. And I like that. Like, it's written well, his death is done well, and it's just I layers. Another thing that adds layers to the story is the ghost of Amadeus Arkham. Yep, the ghost of Amadeus Arkham. It's referenced by the Tenite Man multiple times in this issue, and I'm invested. I'm really interested to see where this story goes. There's been a lot of teases that gets me excited, and how the issue ends with now Asriel going after Dr. Jocasta Joy. Like, it's gonna get more interesting as it, the story goes onward. And adding Asriel into this, I like it. Like, yeah, I like Dr. Jocasta Joy, I like the Ten-Eyed Man, he's cool, but Asriel, he's even better. Like, he is awesome in this issue. And the artwork by Danny, it's very eerie, it fits the tone, and the certain action moments when Asriel just crashes through the glass and he's trying to kill an inmate, and you see Asriel's colors of red and yellow just shining in the dark. I like it. It makes this comic an experience. Experience that you should go through. So yeah, guys, I highly recommend this issue. If you enjoyed the last one, then you're gonna really like this one. But yeah, guys, next up on our list, we got Team Science Academy, number seven. And this issue is actually really good. I've been kinda not enjoying the series recently because the writing has been kinda off. And the whole Red X thing, it just fell apart. Like, they, having Red X come back was a great idea, but they kept teasing him, not showing that identity, and it was not that interesting anymore. But now in this issue, we see Gorilla Greg fight off against his uncle, Gorilla Grodd. And I like it. It's a very fun issue. The artwork by Hoppa Sandoval is amazing. Like, we get a double page spread where Grodd and Greg are having like a mindscape fight, you could call it. And it's cool. The artwork pops off the page. It makes the whole fights seem very epic. And I was invested. I really liked it. Also, Gorilla Greg, I didn't really like his character at the beginning of the series. I didn't care for him. And Tim Sheridan, the writer, wasn't doing enough for me to care for this character. But now, with this issue, I really like Gorilla Greg. Like, his dialogue, he is just how he acts and how he takes situations. It's good. And his relationship with Summer, I really like. I'm interested to see where their relationship will go. And at the end of the issue, we get a very nice moment. Yeah, Gorilla Grodd, he gets beat, he gets sent back to prison, but you see Gorilla Greg, he sends him like an ice cream, and Grodd is just happy, and I like that. And we get references to Greg's mother in the middle of this issue, and Grodd, he thinks Greg is on his side, but then Greg goes against him, and Grodd is like, huh, you're just like your mother. And I thought that was very interesting. So yeah, good issue. I think this is a better direction for this entire series. If Tim Sheridan starts focusing on each new character, make the reader really like these characters, then you can move into a storyline, have them all together, and go on a mission. It'll bring the whole series to a good point, where instead of just, okay, I'm just reading this because it has Teen Titans in the title, no, it won't just be that. It'll be like, oh, I actually like these new characters. I like the writing. I like the artwork. So yeah, I like this issue. I hope the next issue keeps up the momentum. And one thing, keep away from Red X. Keep him out of the stories for a little bit. Like, he's been too much in the Teen Titans Academy, in the Suicide Squad, and we haven't really gotten anything from him. Red X has just been doing stuff. He's been attacking, his identity is still a secret. Like, until the writers of the Suicide Squad comic or Tim Sheridan for this comic decide, you know what, we're gonna go all in, we're gonna reveal Red X's identity and make an interesting story. Until they do that or think about that, 
don't need to address the character. Just focus on the characters you have with this new Teen Titans team. So yeah, guys, that was Teen Titans Academy number seven. Next up, we got Superman 78 number three. This issue was awesome. I really liked it. This whole comic still fits the whole Richard Donner Superman era. And how Superman is written, it feels like I'm watching another old Christopher Reeve Superman film. I really like it. And the artwork, it fits the tone, it's nice. Lex Luthor and Lois Lane's interactions in this issue, and especially the ending with Lex planning to save Superman, it gets me hyped. But the best part of this issue, you see Superman, he surrenders, Brainiac takes him up to his ship, and he puts Superman in the bottled sea of Condor. And Superman reunites with his parents, Jor-El and Lara. And it's a very nice moment. And you see that Superman has to become the hero of Condor now, same as he was the hero for Earth. And it's a really interesting theme. I like it. It's a good direction for the series. And I'm excited. Like, guys, if you've been liking this series so far, then I highly recommend this issue. The writing, the artwork, it's all top notch. Next up, we got Swamp Thing, number nine. This is the penultimate issue of this 10 issue series. And I really like this issue. We see Ram V, he writes. Levi Kamei, Levi Kamei being the main character of the series, the new Swamp Thing, Ram V writes this character so well. Like at the beginning of the series, I was like, okay, Levi Kamei, I don't know if I'm interested in this character yet, but as the series went on, I got more connected to this character. I like the character more, and I really like this version of Swamp Thing. But we see Levi, he goes off to look for Jennifer Reese. And we see Jennifer, she's in a bad situation. And her situation gets worse when Levi's brother, who also has a great power, shows up. He starts attacking this facility. We get epic double page spreads drawn by Mike Perkins. Mike Perkins, his artwork is phenomenal. It fits Swamp Thing so well. And like certain double page spreads, I'm like, wow. Like, they're so detailed. That's my favorite thing about Mike Perkins' artwork. Like, it's detailed, it catches like every moment well. So yeah, guys, this issue is another great issue of the series. You've been reading the series, I highly recommend this comic. Like, what you get is action, you see Swamp Thing versus his brother, you also get certain heartfelt moments, you get more narration from Levi Kamei, written so well by Ram V. Like, why wouldn't you read this issue? And guys, if you've been sleeping on this series, you have not read it, wait till the final issue comes out and then read all 10 issues at once. I'm pretty sure you'll have a good time. But yeah, guys, for our last new comic book of the week, we got the Human Target number one. Christopher Chance, aka the Human Target, he's a master impersonator, and this issue, he impersonates Lex Luthor. And I really like this, guys. The Human Target has always been a character I want to, like, get more invested into because he's has, it's a cool idea. Think about it, guys. He's a bodyguard, but he's kind of like the last guy you go to when you're like pretty sure somebody's gonna kill you, so he helps you fake your death. I like that. And yeah, the human target, he had his own show that wasn't very successful. He showed up on Arrow, and he showed up in comics a couple times, but he's not shown up a lot. So I'm happy he's now getting his own maxi series, a 12 issue series. Written by Tom King, art by Greg Smallwood. Guys, Greg Smallwood's artwork is phenomenal. It looks really good. He makes double page spreads. He makes a lot of cool images and it fits the tone of this book. Also, how he draws Christopher Chance, it reminds me of Carrie Grant's from North by Northwest. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock movie from 1959. It was an American spy thriller, and basically the main character 
Roger Thornville, Thornville, Thornmill, Thornmill. He is mistaken as a government spy. And I'm not gonna reveal the whole story. It's a really great film. I'm not gonna give spoilers. But yeah, how Greg Smallwood draws Christopher Chance, it looks like Harry Grant. It's a good way to draw it. So yeah, I like that. That was just a little thing I wanted to point out. But guys, so far in this whole series, you see Christopher Chance, he's going on adventures, faking people's deaths. That's his big thing, right? His big gig. But the big twist, is he's actually dying. He has 12 days to live. He meets up with Dr. Midnight. I really like Dr. Midnight's inclusion in this issue. His whole scene with Christopher Chance. Now he tells him, hey, do you have anybody you want to sell or anybody you want to see before you die? And Chance is just like, nah, don't worry about it. I got, I got this handled. And we find out that he's been poisoned. He traces his poison back to the Justice League International. And we get this awesome double page spread showing off the Justice League International. It looks awesome. You see characters like Guy Gardner, Batman obviously. You see all the characters from that team and it's just awesome. I really like it. Now for Tom King, he, he does good. His writing is good in this issue. I like it. How the issue ends. It gets me invested. I'm excited to see where the story goes. But I'm also a little skeptical because Tom King is so hit or miss. He always starts out a series on a great note like, man, this is going to be an iconic series. It's going to be so good. But then it falls apart. Examples, Strange Adventures, War Shack, his whole Batman run. Like his whole Batman run, it started out great. But then it ended up being trash at the end. Like, it was not good. So, Tom King, I, I hope he pulls it off. Like, I really hope this series keeps up the quality, keeps up the momentum, because Tom King, he's just hit or miss. And a lot of times, he drags out his stories, and you're like waiting for this payoff. The payoff comes, and it's just not worth the time. Like, you're like, man, I just read 12 issues. For this, like, this payoff kind of sucks. So I hope that's not the case. But I am hyped to see where the story goes. This is a great first issue. And if you guys like the character of Christopher Chance, the human target, then I highly recommend this. But yeah, guys, that's all the new DC Comics of this week. But we're not closing out the video yet. It's time for a backhaul pull. The backhaul pull for this week is going to be... Kingdom Come. Written by Mark Wade, art by Alex Ross. This is my favorite Elseworld DC story of all time. It's just written so well. It's interesting. And I'm pretty sure all you guys know the story. It's iconic. And Mark Wade. Mark Wade is one of the best DC writers. It's actually coming back very soon. I'm looking forward to that. But this story. Okay, let's talk about the artwork actually. Alex Ross. Alex Ross is my favorite artist. Like, he makes everything look realistic, and everything looks like a poster. Like, you can take any image out of this book, and it could be a poster. It's that good. But, you see in the future, different versions of our DC heroes, and the biggest one that everybody knows is Superman, but you also see Wonder Woman, how she's changed. You see Batman, he looks dope. You see Flash. Flash actually has my favorite look of all. But he has like the helmet, he's fully red. You see Green Lantern. Like all the characters are changed in a way. And it's in the future, a lot has happened. It's a great story and I highly recommend it. If you just want a good DC Elseworld story, then this is the one to check out. So yeah. That's the back all pool this week. The reason that shows this is because we got a new Elseworld story written by Tom Taylor, Dark Knights of Steel. It was the best book of the week. It was actually my pick of the week. And I was like, okay, what's another great Elseworld story? What's my favorite Elseworld story? Kingdom Come. But yeah, guys, that's going to close out this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like all my thoughts and all the new comic books of the week. And actually tell me your thoughts down below. What was your favorite new comic? 
and what you think about Kingdom Come. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on that down below about Alex Ross, Mark Wade, how all the DC heroes are acting in this dark future that leads to a very optimistic end. But yeah, guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. You shall make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on my next DC Comics video. And yeah, thanks for watching and peace out.